What's up guys and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Today we are going to be checking out one of the most unique aircraft in the world. She doesn't need a pilot. This is the Northrop Grumman RQ-4 Global Hawk. This is a UAV drone. It's the largest drone in the world and uh, we're going to go do some exploring of New Zealand. We're here in Queenstown, New Zealand, and honestly, I mean, the Kiwis are great. You've got to love them. They're out here on their little island with all their cool mountains and, and views and just kind of in their own little bubble, not worrying about anyone or anything besides themselves. They're living very peacefully out here, so I don't think we would need a giant UAV to spy on them, but I just figured it would give us a, a bit more to look at than something out in the desert. Now, the crazy part is this is a UAV. It's an unmanned aerial vehicle. Technically, you don't even need a pilot. It can fly completely autonomously, but if you want some human interaction with it, you're going to find it in this box. This is our cockpit. We're in some sort of Connex box somewhere. We've got a clock on the wall. We've got a seat for our co-pilot and uh, I mean this this is pretty nice. We got some screens. We got a little joystick. Got a little throttle over here and this is how you control this which is really crazy. We've even got a checklist down here. Turn on the station power. Connect the SATCOM link. Remove the static equipment if needed. Turn on UAV master battery. Turn on the lights. Turn on the fuel valve and engine start. So the big red button here, this is our station power. Let's fire this up. Looks like things are going to start turning on. We've got no signal, but we can connect to the SATCOM and that should put us in contact with our little drone here. Dude, this is so insane. Think about how we could be thousands of miles away communicating and flying this drone. Like it, it it's so cool. It's like a toy. It's like a little RC aircraft, except it's, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars and it can uh, see what you ate for dinner last night in your toilet bowl. Let's turn on the master battery. He oh, look at that. If we turn it on. Okay. So the master battery is going to set us up. We've got some navigational info. We've got our, our screen here. So we're looking at a mountain. There's a little blue light. Let's see if this is accurate. Yep. It's looking straight ahead. So there's our blue light. And there's our mountains off in the distance. Looks like we've got some more navigational equipment here. You can set up flight plans and procedures and things like that. Like I said, this can 100% be anonymous. You could probably put in a flight plan and tell it exactly where to go. It'll go up there, fly, take your photos, come back and land. It'll do it all itself. Obviously, today we're going to be controlling it with our little joystick here. So we are going to go into performance. We can give it fuel. Set up the payload. Looks like we can have about 3,000 pounds of a payload and about 14,000 pounds of fuel. We're going to take off the chocks. So we've got chocks on the wheels here. If we hit that, it should remove them. And then we're also going to take off the cones, the engine intake, engine exhaust, and the pilot tubes. So we should be fully exposed and ready to go. We've got these tubes here for all of our readings. We've got the giant satellite in front to be able to communicate. We've got our cameras on it. We're gonna talk about that later. And uh, she is just about ready to go. We wanna turn on the fuel valve right and then engine starts. We'll see. I'm trying to listen. She's starting up. A big old engine in there, big old jet engine. Oh, dude, that's pretty cool. That's just, it's, it's so crazy to think about, man. We are on the other side of the world in some air conditioned box somewhere, and we've got this giant incredible piece of military technology obeying every command this is just such a weird alien looking thing and the thing is is these were developed in the 90s like this thing is is kind of old it was first used by the u.s air force in 2001 so she's been around for a while but it's still so weird and futuristic and honestly very black mirror-y it's got our parking brake here i'm gonna hit that and then I'm going to see if we can control it from in here. So let's give her a little a little gas. Oh, she's moving. Oh gosh. Okay. We have a simulator in a simulator here. Do not wreck this plane, please, Trev. I'm going to try to follow these yellow lines out. We can switch. Let's take the the long route here. Oh, she's she's kind of leaning a little bit, huh? We're going to be fine. She moves pretty quickly. Back in, dude. This is so insane. Let's zoom in and, and get the full the full view here. This <laughs> this is ridiculous. Just a sim within a sim. So we're gonna pull out here, 
We've got a very narrow field of view, kind of concerning me a little bit. We want to make sure we don't run into anything. Looks like we've got a long runway in front of us here. Let's get lined up. And uh, we're going to take off out of Queenstown, baby. Here we go. Full throttle. Full speed ahead. The Global Hawk is ready for takeoff, baby. Here we go. Look at her go. This giant unmanned thing. There's no windshield, no anything. It's it's just a drone. This like, you know, little Mavic 3 that you can take your little photos and stuff with. Yep, it's pretty much the same thing. It's just got a lot better cameras on it. So we've got that there. Let's go in. We're going to hit our landing gear and let's watch these go in. Pretty standard landing gear. Looks good to me. And, and off we go, baby. Off into the uh, New Zealand afternoon. This part is just so crazy to me that there's, you know, soldiers out there, pilots out there, just sitting in boxes, flying around like this, like they're playing COD. This is like the AC-130 mission we've had in every Modern Warfare Call of Duty campaign since the beginning of time. You're just up here flying around doing your thing. Oh, look at the wing flex on that. Dude, this thing looks really, really cool. Look at him go, and also look at New Zealand in the background. Holy cow, it's a place I've never been. I would really love to go. This is maybe the most beautiful place we've ever flown in this game. My goodness. I don't think that's a maybe. I, I think it's 100% the most beautiful place. Wow. Really can't take it all in when you're looking at it through a screen. You gotta see it up here in real life. So yeah, this is the RQ-4 Global Hawk. It's an unmanned surveillance vehicle that's known for its super high altitude and super long range. Like I said, it was built in the 90s. It was first used by the Air Force in 2001, and it's been in service ever since. It's still being used today. It's seen a lot of action in Afghanistan, Iraq. It, you know, Nowadays, it's over in Ukraine and Russia and things like that, just kind of doing a little bit of reconnaissance. There's absolutely no payload in terms of like weaponry on this thing. You're not gonna find any missiles or guns or anything like that. She is strictly for reconnaissance. She's got two sensors. So one is gonna be the electro-optical sensor, with, which is this right here. It's basically a digital camera. It, it you know, captures visible light and it takes really, really high quality photos. So you can fly over enemy territory and battlefields and things like that and take photos to be able to send back and analyze and, and see enemy movements and targeting locations and how your people are doing and stuff like that. It's also got an infrared sensor, which I'm not sure where it is. I'm tempted to say this, but I don't want to commit, but um, that's going to detect heat signatures. So obviously during the daytime, you've got your digital camera where you can take pictures of visible light. And then at nighttime, you can see heat signatures and still get intel on movement down on the ground. Now you can see here, we're currently at about 11,700 feet and climbing, and that is where this thing truly, truly shines. The Global Hawk is truly global, so it can fly at altitudes of up to 60,000 feet, which we're gonna try to make our way up there slowly but surely. We'll see what it looks like in a minute. But uh, it can fly up there for up to 32 hours in one go, AKA about 12,000 miles, AKA about half of the circumference of the earth. So you could fly halfway around the world on one tank of gas, taking photos and hardly being seen in the process. It can survey up to 40,000 square miles of terrain per day, which is about the size of Iceland. So this this thing here, I wanna say this little thing, but it's really not little. Honestly, that's one of the things that surprised me the most is just how freaking massive it is. It's kind of hard to tell up here, but we saw it down on the ground. It's it's huge. The wingspan's about 130 feet, which is bigger than a lot of commercial airlines, and it weighs about 30,000 pounds. So it, it's a big drone, but in the grand scheme of things, the amount of area that it can cover and intel that it can get, it's just, it's honestly really, really incredible that something like this exists. Bro, look at the lake down there. Are you kidding me? Hold on, we gotta go see this. What What is that? Bright turquoise blue. Okay, I'm, I'm booking a trip to New Zealand this year. This is just such an incredible landscape. Oh my goodness, how have we not flown through here before? This is absolutely insane, but um, yeah, so this, it's, it's all about taking in the views. You know, I don't think you're gonna see many of these over in New Zealand primarily used for war and battlefield and enemy reconnaissance and things like that, but it's also used for humanitarian efforts. So when big hurricanes come through or there's tsunamis or giant earthquakes and things like that, these will be deployed around the world so they can take photos and help people and save people and things. So, you know, 
grounded in battle, but can also do some good for the world, which, you know, you gotta have a little bit of balance in your life. The Global Hawk certainly does. I will say she's pretty slow. We're going about 250 knots here. I'm gonna try to try to raise this up a bit. We're gonna see how high we can go. I really love the wing flex that's happening. Look at how long those those wings are and the elevators that we have there. All of them. Let's move around a bit. Yeah, this thing is sick. With the moon in the, the background over here, are you freaking kidding me? Like, come on. This is one of the more beautiful flights we've ever made. This is the part that would be boring in the, the box, though. Let me just, uh, I'm gonna spawn in a, a friend here. Yo, uh, Fred, Fred, Frederina, how, how you doing? Um, you wanna order some Chick-fil-A or, or something? Cause it's, it's gonna be a really long time. She's at 16,000 feet and hardly climbing. Imagine just staring at this screen all day waiting for it to get to its its point that you need to get it to i doubt you really pay too much attention to it unless you're in like a serious thing where you're taking the photos right in that moment i bet it just kind of flies itself i just can't get over this thing man what a cool piece of equipment what a, a you know specific job that this thing has to just fly super high really not that fast but try to stay off radar and and take some photos that's what this thing does and she's, she's really struggling to keep gaining altitude. We're at about 25,000. It can go to 60 in real life, so maybe it can't in game, but I've got a, a little trick for it. Let's get ourselves level. We're going to pause. I bet they might be able to actually fly this thing on an Xbox controller as well, but we're, we're going to go up. So let's see how high we need to go for it to be at 60,000 feet. That's about 60 right there. So this is the true operating level of this aircraft for some reason we can't fly it up here in flight sim but this is how high up you would be if we go back into our little base thing this is what you'd see just kind of on the very edge of space just gliding around up here and and taking some photos of the, the valleys and deserts and mountains below now what's really crazy is like i said this thing's kind of old like it's it's been around for a couple decades now it's actually supposed to be put into retirement at the end of this current decade somewhere around like 2027 they're expecting they're gonna have the replacement for it and um you know it, it's just kind of scary to think about what else is out there if this thing was developed in the 90s what kind of technology do we have today how how much have we advanced in the last 24 years what kind of surveillance does our military have to to you know use up here because i guess these things have started to kind of be caught i think iran shot one down uh, a few years ago and and some of the modern anti-air guns can keep up with this again it's it's you know it's really high but it's really slow so uh, technology is starting to be able to catch up these things are showing up on radar they're being able to be shot down so we we've got even better stuff it, it's probably up there what's the highest point that we can go in flight sim we're gonna find out really quick oh my goodness okay uh this this is it right here let's resume it here if we go back take a look at our about 140,000 feet up here so maybe this is the type of stuff we're working with today oh my goodness dude look at that imagine the the camera it would it would take to be able to see down that low but you're i mean you're you're are you in space technically at 140,000 feet i'm not sure hey siri how high does space start about 62 miles above the earth so 62 times 5280 about 327,000 feet so we're about one third of the way to space there we've got a ways to go but uh we're we're just kind of floating are we Maybe we are in space. At, at this point, we're a satellite. We're no longer a plane. I think we're, we're, just, we're just floating here. All right, buddy, I got you. We're going to put you a, a little bit further down. Let's see. Down here, can we get moving about 300,000 feet? Or about 130,000 feet, I think. She really doesn't, doesn't like being up here. I'm going to try to enter some sort of a dot. Oh, well, this. I don't think this is how it was supposed to, I, I might be getting fired here I, this this is not going to be an, an expensive uh crash if we can't get this thing back down nothing to see here just a, a you know a couple hundred million dollars falling like a rock to the surface of the earth I'm just gonna put us back down here let's pretend like that whole thing didn't happen so yeah the rq4 global hawk very cool very specific niche style uh, 
piece of equipment that has been protecting our borders and our troops for a very long time. Been calling these things in in Call of Duty for, for a very long time, and now we can actually see one in the flesh. Again, I just, I can't believe how freaking big this thing is. That's what surprised me the most in the, the research of this episode. I knew they were big. I thought they were like, I don't know, the size of a car or something, or maybe a little bit bigger than that. I, I knew it wasn't, you know, a small drone, but I did not expect it to be bigger than, you know, a, a Boeing 707. It's got a longer wingspan than that, which is absolutely insane, as is the incredible incredible setting here we have an airport up here in front of us Ooh, all right we could try to put this thing down let's go ahead and get our landing gear down we're gonna try to slow this down i do like how zoomed in the camera is you can kind of feels like you can see a bit further than out here so it looks like we're gonna want to come in on the right and then kind of cut back a little bit left definitely gonna want to slow things down i don't know what our cruising speed is don't want to end up crashing this. I don't think we want this technology going into the wrong hands. I also feel like the Milford Sound Airport is going to be very confused when a U.S. spy drone ends up on their back porch. Oh, oh, this, okay, this, this is a runway. I thought it was going to be a lot longer and I didn't realize it was going to be covered by all these trees. We're coming in super hot. I don't know where the air brakes are. Oh gosh, okay. We're just going to have to get her down on the ground. Come on, baby. Coming in. Lose our altitude. I don't think we're going to be able to lose speed quick enough. We'll see. I think I'm on the brakes. I'm not sure. Come on. Oh! Ah, we're fine. We, we snuck her in there. Just look at how freaking big this thing is. Oh, the, the fuel truck's like, yo, what is going on? Get me out of here. Look at the size of us compared to a normal airplane or the fuel truck or the human. This is just absolutely ridiculous so anyway hope you guys enjoyed thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you guys in the next one peace out